President Trump, big news here. The president has invited Israel's prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, and his political opponent, Benny Gantz, to the White House. They'll come next week. The president says he'll unveil his Mideast peace plan before that meeting. Kanta Ahmed, Muslim scholar and independent women's forum fellow, is with us now. Now, uh, what do you think American Muslims will, how will they react to Benjamin Netanyahu and Benny Gantz at the White House? A great question. I'm not sure how closely American Muslims will follow this because really the Muslims that are animated by this are in the Middle East, North Africa region, which is 300 million Muslims. We are 1.3 uh, billion in the world. Um, but I think the prospect of peace and stability in the region would be very encouraging to everybody. And the deal that is offered potentially is of enormous financial investment, not only in the uh, disputed or Palestinian territories, however you want to refer to them, but also in surrounding partner states. You mean, you mean there's money coming in here? Well, Jared Kushner's Peace to Prosperity plan was That's extremely yeah. ambitious, calling for $50 billion of borrowed uh, money, concession loans, private grants, to be invested not only into Gaza and areas of the West Bank, but into regional partners. And the fact that that meeting was held in Manama in Bahrain last summer, and it was attended by much of the Arab Gulf, even Qatar and Saudi Arabia at this same meeting, despite their um, uh, break in relations in the GCC, tells us that the the Arab Muslim world is looking beyond the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. They are looking for diplomatic engagement with Israel and full economic ties with Israel, not just behind the scenes cooperation. Jared Kushner has kind of quarterbacked this. Well, I mean, he's a, he's a pragmatist. Well, has, he, has he got the Palestinians into this? Well, the Palestinians from the outset have refused to engage in this process since President Trump announced the movement of the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. They've moved away. But tragic that it is, the Palestinians have not participated in negotiations for a very long time. They really walked away from a golden offer in Oslo 25 years ago. And now this may be their last option to really gain stability and normalization in that region. Bring me up to speed, if you would, on Minnesota, Ilan Omar, um, Muslim member of Congress. I believe she's being challenged by another Muslim woman who is a Republican. How's that, that going to shake that's out? That's right. Dahlia Akidi. That's it. She's the candidate. She's an, a former Iraqi national, now a naturalized American. She believes very much in, um, in protecting the United States, defending its constitution. She's enormously indebted, as I am, to the United States for all of her opportunities. And she speaks for many American Muslims. In fact, <laughs> that view is probably more representative, that we are uh, so offended by Ilhan Omar's portrayal of us as a whole when she doesn't represent us. Ilhan Omar promotes anti-American views, anti-Semitic views. Uh, she is uh, in many ways anti-establishment and pro-Muslim Brotherhood, pro-Islamist. Many of the forces that we left those regions for to seek shelter in the United States, Ilhan Omar uh, represents. That's why American Muslims may be spoken for by mouthpieces like Ilhan Omar that are Islamist, rather than allowing a more objective view to come forward with the Israel-Palestine peace process too. Fascinating. Kanta Ahmed, thanks as always.